Welcome to the final days. Today is January 31st, 2022. I have some really interesting information to share today. We will be seeing visual proof that this object you are seeing in this picture is between the moon and the earth. Now that is very, very close. Close enough to disrupt weather, tectonic plates, volcanism, and other vital systems that keep our earth running smoothly. The purpose of this channel is to show viewers that we are living in the very last days, according to the Holy Bible. The day before yesterday, January 29th, when I collected all the images you are about to see, the moon was at 9% illumination. It was a tiny sliver as you can see over on the left side of the screen. These images begin at 540 in the morning local time in Colorado. We see the projected image of the moon rising upward. Does this look like a 9% crescent moon to you? It's supposed to look like this. But instead, our moon looks like a full moon for a few frames, which I'll explain in just a minute. Thus, for the first few frames, instead of seeing an actual tiny sliver at 9% illumination, we see an ultra-bright glare for the moon. Then, in the seventh frame, the ultra-bright glare goes away, and we finally see the real moon sliver at 9% illumination. When the moon is being eclipsed by an object, the manufactured glare keeps shining in the direction of the moon in order to hide the eclipse. Once the moon is past the eclipsing object, the manufactured glare is no longer needed and then we see the real moon. In the next few frames, we will see what was eclipsing the moon. In order for this object to eclipse our moon, this means it has to be between the earth and the moon. Our moon is 238,900 miles away. So this object is closer than that, which is very, very close for a celestial object. Here is the same object viewed from the Lexington, Mississippi FAA weather camera. I'll play the footage exactly as it came off the camera and then we'll view it with contrast applied to bring out the details. This video begins around 7.30 a.m. local time in Mississippi and it ends at 2 p.m. So the frames are always 10 minutes apart which means we're looking at six and a half hours of images. In just a minute we will see this same object from a different camera showing remarkable details. But right now I just wanted you to see that this same object can be viewed from Mississippi as well as Colorado. In the past this celestial object has almost always been under very heavy chemically indu induced cloud cover as shown in many previous videos. Why this object was so very visible on January 29th is a total mystery. It's very strange that in the past this object has been carefully hidden from view but then on Saturday January 29th here it is in plain sight this just doesn't make sense. I don't know what has changed. The images with contrast really help to bring out the details better. And as I've mentioned before, the contrast has to be applied to only part of the picture in order to be effective. Um, actually, if, if the contrast is, implied to the, is applied to the entire image, it just doesn't even work you can't even see the contrast. Thus, the contrast is applied only where it's needed. Many of you are probably aware of the fact that we could never see an object like this behind our real sun 
93 million miles away. And as you can see, the sun is covering part of this object in some of these frames. So if you think this is the real sun, then what you are seeing in these image, images is an absolute impossibility. It would be ludicrous to think that we could see something like this behind our real sun. That just couldn't happen. The manufactured light you see in these images was shown and explained in great detail in the November 27th video several weeks ago. This is one more sign that we are living in the very last days according to the Holy Bible. In the Bible's book of Luke, chapter 21, verse 25, Jesus tells us that we will see signs in the sky when the end is near. Here is the same object from the FAA weather camera located in Sawatch, Colorado. We're going to see much better detail from a different camera in just a minute, but I wanted folks to see that this same object is visible from several different cameras, not just one or two. In the morning, we see what looks like a full moon again, when it's supposed to be a 9% moon. We see what looks like two different suns coming up. Here's one at 6.11 a.m., which is much, much brighter than a security light would be. This is some kind of a sun. I don't know what it is. A few frames later, we see the sun peeking over the horizon again at 7.21 a.m., a little more than an hour later. A few frames later, we see once again the object that was eclipsing the moon. And now it is going to partially eclipse the sun as well. For several reasons, we know that this cannot possibly be a lens flare of the sun. One is its fast rotation. Our sun only rotates once every 27 Earth days, and this object is rotating much faster than that. Another reason is because the manufactured light that resembles the sun is actually over top of part of this object in several frames. This celestial object is actually going behind the light source in much of this video. A lens flare of the sun can never go behind any objects in a picture or a video. I don't have names or labels for any of these celestial objects that show up on these FAA weather cameras, but I can tell you that these are signs that we are living in the very very last days. The east facing camera at Wolf Creek Pass, Colorado shows us the same object in better detail. Notice in the first few frames that the light source is partially covering this celestial object. Once again, this is an impossibility if the light source we're looking at is the real sun. There are a couple more reasons that we know this cannot be a lens flare of the sun. One is that this object has a highly textured surface with many craters. A lens flare of the sun is a reflection of the sun, and therefore it must look something like the sun. The surface of our sun does not look anything like this. Notice in some of these frames that the heavily cratered celestial object is partially illuminated by the light source, meaning that the object is brighter where the light source is close to it. This is partial illumination. A lens flare can never become partially illuminated by the light source causing the lens flare. So we've covered four scientific reasons why this object cannot possibly be a lens flare of the sun. These images on the east-facing camera cover a three-hour 
and 20 minute span of time. So basically, it takes about three and a half hours to go from rising to fully up in the sky. I did a rough estimation on how fast this object rotates. If we focus on one particular crater near the equator of this object and we follow it until it is diametrically opposite from the bottom to the top, it takes about 150 minutes. Then for that crater to come back down would be another 150 minutes. Thus, we know that this celestial object makes one full complete rotation every 300 minutes or once every five hours. Since our Earth rotates once every 24 hours at the equator, this object is rotating almost five times as fast as the Earth rotates. This is the same story with all of the different celestial objects we've seen in this inbound planetary system from the FAA cameras that are scattered all across Alaska, Canada, and now in Montana, Colorado, Mississippi, and parts of the northeastern U.S. They all seem to rotate very fast, much, much faster than the Earth rotates. I saved the best for last. Here is the same object with incredible detail. This one is from the south facing camera in Wolf Creek Pass, Colorado. The whitish area that develops after a few frames appears to be a reflection of something, perhaps some equipment. Once again, notice how this object becomes partially illuminated beneath the light source. It's brighter where it is closer to the light, so we know it cannot be a lens flare. And in the last couple frames, it actually disappears into the large glare on the horizon created by the manufactured light source. I'll play the footage exactly as it came off the camera, and then we will look at it with contrast and then also close up. Once again, they are, these are signs that we are living in the very, very last days. As you can see from all these images, there really isn't much time left to turn your life over to Jesus. The magnetic effects of these close celestial bodies will continue to cause Earth's molten core to increase in both size and temperature. What is coming is all part of God's wrath upon a world full of sin and abomination. The powers that be know exactly what's coming, and my guess is that they will have to use war to cover up the destruction from the approaching system so that no one knows they've been lied to for decades while these things have been coming our way for many, many years. These effects are all described in the Bible's book of Revelation, the very last book in the Bible describing the end of all things, when God's wrath is poured out upon this sinful world. Many won't make it. The good news about all this is that faithful believers in Christ are not appointed to God's wrath often referred to as the time of the Great Tribulation. God has always protected the faithful praying remnant from His wrath, and He will continue to do so. We have God's promise on this. The New King James Version of Luke chapter 21 verse 36 reads, Watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass. Jesus is referring to, to God's wrath, His judgments, the Great Tribulation. He is saying that those who are counted worthy will escape all of God's wrath. 
To be counted worthy, we must be living in holiness. A link in the description box below discusses what holiness is and how to achieve it. Please read Psalm 91 to learn how God promises to protect those living in holiness from His wrath. The next few screens will instruct you on how to accept Jesus Christ into your life so that you can be counted worthy and escape God's soon coming wrath. Thanks for watching.